Good day, it's Rob Deptford, and this is Get Vocal on Video, and to my left, 3,000 plus miles away, uh, <laughs> in Orlando, Florida, uh, yet close enough we can high-five on screen, pretty much. That's right. <laughs> <There we go. laughs> Joseph L. Jones, Jr., how are you, Joseph? I am wonderful, Rob. Happy to be getting vocal on video with you. <laughs> As always, likewise, absolutely. So... Uh, we've done a pretty good series of these discussions so far, and uh, the idea behind these is it really is sort of a conversational training around some of the advantages of video for branding and marketing and communications, the things that your business needs, particularly in this day and age, uh, where we don't have a lot of choice but to be moving operations into the digital space. Uh, and so we, we've covered a few topics, and I certainly encourage people to go back to either your YouTube channel or mine and have a look at some of the previous episodes. Today we want to talk a little bit about maximizing your message. So it's not necessarily just about taking the step to start creating video, uh, but understanding why are we doing it, right? Why, why are we getting on camera in the first place, and why are we wanting to deliver a particular message to our audience? Well, the reason why we're getting on camera is because we're leveraging the technology that is available to us right now the face-to-face -face models that we used to utilize and being in front of people going door to door, that's not something that's really available right now. So being able to stand in front of people or stand in front of the camera and present to people and actually many more people, reaching many more people than we could have otherwise reached face-to-face -face or in a small group setting, this is what we're leveraging with respect to the technology and we're doing that with YouTube and with social media and video and these outlets that allow us to expand and reach many more places with the messages that we want to deliver. Yeah, we have tremendous leverage, don't we? Uh, with the number of people that we could potentially reach on different platforms uh, in the digital space, especially on social media. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I mean, not all of them, as we've said before, are necessarily going to be in our target audience. But the point really is that we're reaching people who may also be connected to other people who are potentially in our target audience. So there is that leverage uh, that is just sort of innate in the process of getting out there and putting content uh, out in the space. Right, you never know where your message is going to reach, which is the reason why it's important to maximize it, because it can get into places and you don't necessarily know specifically where that message is going, but somehow oftentimes it finds the person that that message is supposed to find. And you really can't do that unless that message is maximized to its optimal level. And again, that's the benefit of being able to utilize video to be able to get your message to as many places as possible. That's the maximizing effect of what we're doing with Get Vocal on Video. Now, there has to be some strategy behind our messaging, doesn't there? Um, and, and I think uh, maybe it's a little bit different for video than it might be in some other, uh, some, some other formats, let's say. So I'm thinking, for example, of uh, a TED Talk. Uh, a TED Talk tends to be around 18 minutes. Uh, I think that's the, the recommended time anyway. And I know there's some science behind that in terms of it being a, a good length for the presenter to get the message out and for the audience to sort of absorb that message. Um, but we know from uh, previous discussions that that may actually be too long for some platforms, uh, depending on our marketing and communication strategy that we're trying to implement. So we have to find other ways to really uh, maximize the message, so to speak. Um, and I know one of the things that we talk about coming from a journalism background that I like to bring to mind for people is uh, there's this, this writing style for newspapers called the inverted pyramid writing style. And the whole concept is we're flipping the story on end. So where you would read a novel and you would get once upon a time on a dark, dark and stormy night and the plot thickens and eventually there's this massive ending of some kind that, that is uh, a revelation, so to speak. We're giving the revelation first. 
right? We're giving that up right. front. That's the first thing we say. Um, and then we talk about some of the supporting detail uh, in order to allow the audience to first receive the message immediately because we know attention spans are short, um, but then decide whether or not they're going to stay tuned in. Right. That's very much sort of like walking from the end, <laughs> yeah. starting at the end for that example. And that's very, very true. That's basically the way that we want to do it in video form as well. It's the idea of condensing a lot of information down to really some small bite-sized bullet points and then presenting those bullet points. You're not going to be able to tell the expanded story, obviously, of what happened going around the cabin and up in the woods and all of that, but you want to hit home with those immediate points and those necessary vital points that the person needs. And you want to be able to condense that in a way where not only it's condensed in terms of time, but it's condensed in terms of the way that the person that's listening can assimilate it. Because it could be shorter, but it may not be in a fashion where the person can assimilate. So you want to make sure that you're marrying both of those points together so that the person can see it, receive it, and receive it in a short amount of time, but also get those most impactful points quickly. Absolutely. And something else that comes up in conversation with me is, uh, you know, certain people have a natural talent, I think, as you do, to get up and speak to people in a way that resonates. Um, and that has to do with a number of different things. Some of it is, is presence, body language, eye contact. Um, some of it is, is vocal cadence, the ability to have inflection in the right places when we're speaking, uh, to help bring home the message in a sense in many ways. And uh, what I tell people is, yes, I mean, I, I have broadcast training from years ago. So that's where that comes from for me. Um, and, uh, and other people do. And, you know, I think you have some ministry experience where, where, where maybe some of that comes from. Um, so depending on different backgrounds, you may have had opportunity to develop those skills. But what I think is important for people to understand that these are learnable skills. Very much learnable skills, whether you want to call them tools of the trades or tricks of the craft or whatever you want to call it. There are abilities and there are skills that can be learned, but not only learned, they can be developed and then they can also be mastered. So you mentioned your, your um, media background and that obviously showed that broadcasting presence and that cadence and that ability to deliver a point and that ability to craft words, if you will, and connect with the public in that way, that's very much present. I have a background also in terms of actually starting out from a very young age in youth organizations and, and community organizations and religious organizations and then building business and standing in front of people and having those conversations as well. And at some point getting comfortable doing that. So that's helpful also, but all of that has to be developed over a period of time. The way that you end is not necessarily the way that you start. You start out sometimes choppy, yeah. <laughs> not really making the connection, scared, you know, <laughs> looking at the audience and they're looking at you and then you just go blank. Some of those, some of those things happen from time to time. But as you continue in the process, you get better, you get more comfortable, and you settle into yourself and settle into the process. And that's what I would want the people who are listening to really take away from this. It's a process, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a long process because it's based on your ability to really settle in to the process, just settle into it and don't try and fight with it. When you try and fight with it, that makes it a little bit more difficult and that makes the process a little bit longer. But you want to keep in mind that the people that are listening to you are connecting with what you're presenting to them based on where you're coming from. And if the place that you're coming from is a place that they can connect with and a desire of yours to connect with them, they'll gravitate to that and they'll connect to that. And that will help your message to resonate more with them. 
Yeah, and I think how, at least how I would measure that is through the engagement that I receive from from the message itself. So uh, if I'm posting on social media, I'll watch and see, am I generating comments on the post? Uh, Is there some conversation starting to happen in the thread? Uh, Am I getting emails, right? Or or is there some other Mm -hmm. thing happening as a result of the message that I've delivered? And for business, I mean, ultimately, People want to get customers, and I get that. Um, but right. I, th- I think that right. you know it, it's not a direct line like maybe it was at one point. It's it's not craft the message, make a sale. It's craft the message, build a relationship, right. uh, establish a long term identity, as you've talked about before, as as somebody who is trusted and known and liked, um, and uh, and maybe somebody that our custom customer might want to buy from at some point. Um, but it is a longer term process. Uh, and, uh, and I think that, you know, in terms of maximizing the message, we have to think about these multiple ways of measuring, not just the sale, but other things that measure the effectiveness of our message. I think the greatest measurable is the relatability. If they relate to you, and it goes back to the idea of maximizing, first you want to be able to maximize yourself. And as you're maximizing, then you bring that same maximization to your product and your presentation. Then once the customer or the client connect with you and resonate with you, then they'll be willing to buy and support however they can with whatever product that you come out with. But it starts first with that relatability with the person that's actually presenting. And then as that person begins to let them know about other things that are offered, and how those things can help and impact them, and even the clients that they may have, then those persons that are watching, they'll they'll support you. Because it's not just the product, the first thing that they must buy into is you. Say it right, say a whole lot in a short period of time, establish that no like and trust factor. Uh, Anything else? What, anything to add? Let's tie it up in a bow, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess the biggest takeaway is going to be in terms of maximizing and getting your message out. The first thing you want to make sure is that you're doing the background work and the foundational work of maximizing yourself, maximizing the products that you're utilizing, getting the most out of those products. <clears throat> Then when you go to the public and present those products, you're presenting the product as a finished product. And then when the customers see what you're presenting and they see that that product is completed and that person has gone through the process themselves, then they'll say, well, maybe I can do this. If he did this and he went through these steps, then I can do that also if the person that is presenting is trustworthy and have established some type of consistency and have branded themselves properly. This is how they can maximize their presentation, maximize what it is that they're offering, and the public and the person that's watching will buy into that because they're buying into the presenter. Wise words as always, Joseph L. Jones Jr. Uh, We appreciate everybody watching and hopefully you'll get some value out of this series. As I mentioned off the top, we've got some other episodes on both of our YouTube channels and certainly encourage you to go and check those out. And if you have comments or questions, uh, leave those in the comments down below. If it's on YouTube or if you're seeing this on LinkedIn or another platform, we'll certainly try to respond as quickly as possible to those. And uh, otherwise, hope to see you for another episode. We'll uh, talk to you soon.